What up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is 3 o'clock on the uh, East Coast, so that means it's 12 o'clock on the West Coast, and that means the Dallas Cowboys are out on the field on their first padded practice. Now, this is when the rubber beats the road. You know, you've heard me say that a couple of times, uh, you know, out here, because I believe this is where things start to get real. You know, we always hear about guys, they're looking great, they're looking great. Yeah, until the pads come on, and shit gets real then. It's not quite as easy when you're running around free and not actually taking those hits. It's a little different when the pads go on. But I've got a question. We'll have more about practice after practice. But I, I got a Jalen Carter, you know, the much to do about a great college player. You know, everybody is already conceded. You know, we're already talking about he's going to be defensive rookie of the year and this, that, and the other. You know, he is, it, it's on the hype train. And he's already talking about the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I, I don't mean any harm. I don't mean any harm. I know you played at a great college and you had success there and stuff and all that. But here's the thing. You played on a great defense with a lot of great players and stuff around you. Now you're going to the NF of L. The N F of L, where everybody is great, and I mean everybody is great. And are you sure you want to start putting the Dallas Cowboys on blast? I, I mind you, mind you, I need to remind you, Eagles, that when you start talking about killing the Cowboys, you ain't been able to really do that. You haven't really been able to do that. You know, you can say a lot of things about the Dallas Cowboys, but the Cowboys, you know, we may not have success in the playoffs. It's because we're not playing you guys. I guarantee if we were to play you guys in the playoffs, so far. Mind you, Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys are 8-3 and three against your ass. 8-3. and three. That's ownership. That's seriously ownership. Hold on. So everybody, and I mean everybody in the NFL, are the best players in football. So it's not like you're going against, you know, Mary Sisters of the Poor. You're going against the best of the best. And you ain't even had your first padded practice, and you're already calling out you're ready to kill some cowboys? Now, I'm not one that's crazy about talking. I always believe you let your talking on the field do the talking for you. You know, because Michael, 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 Micah Parsons has been chirping a lot. I ain't going to lie. He's been chirping a lot. But you can look and say, yeah, defensive rookie of the year. Yeah, the guy who's had, you know, more pressure than sacks and everything else in his time and everything else. And, yeah, he's actually been out there and doing some things and may have some space to be able to talk. I'm, I'm just saying. But one thing I can definitely say is the Cowboys versus the Eagles is getting built up. It has become what, you know, this is what's crazy to me. It's the evolution of football. See, when I grew up, okay, I grew up in the Washington, D.C. area, and I know people will say, you're a bandwagon fan. And I know I don't look that old, but I'm the same age as the Super Bowls. Same age as the Super Bowl. 57 years old. I'll be 58. <sighs> I'll be 58 if I'm still alive for this Super Bowl. Same age as Michael Irvin. I've been around for all the Super Bowls. But when I grew up, Growing up in the Washington, D.C. area, my dad was a Dallas Cowboy fan. And I guess you could say I am a bandwagon fan of my dad. And I wanted to be just like him. And still to this day, I want to be like my dad. And that's why I'm working on not cussing so much. But you mother humping trolls just get on, a, get on my last damn nerve. Be that as it may. When Washington and Dallas were going to play, the air was literally electric. 
the trash talking between the teams, you know, going through the newspapers and stuff, you know, the players talking about the other players on the other team. And, you know, you get guys like, um, damn, Dexter Manley saying, I won't clean Danny White's clock out, you know, and then proceeded to do so. Um, listening to George Allen talking about how he hated Dallas Cowboys and how they and Joe Gibbs talking about the Cowboy fans are the ugliest fans in the world and this kind of stuff. Of course, the Cowboys, we, we were the team that was being chased. We didn't do all that trash talking because they wanted what the Cowboys had. Yeah, it, it, I, I don't know if you guys understand that. See, that's why you got the Eagle fans that are constantly there trying to trash and denigrate the Dallas Cowboys because they want that notoriety. They want that love. They want that publicity that the Cowboys have. It's called jealousy. But during that week, the buildup, oh, it was bigger than the game. The game was almost a letdown. And it's beginning to feel that way about Cowboys and Eagles. Because Lord knows, Philly 500 has the Cowboys on his mind 24-7, living rent-free. And now you've got the Eagle players with the Dallas, that just got there, that literally just got there, having the Dallas Cowboys living rent-free, living rent-free in their minds. Instead of worrying about the Dallas Cowboys, when you're just getting started in your first training camp, you might want to worry about practice. You know what I'm saying? But uh, we've seen these overhyped players before that everybody's darling and this, that, and the other and see how they actually work out. We'll see how Jalen Carter works out. In fact, we'll see how a lot of these guys work out for the Eagles because the Eagles' defense, that defense that gave up more points uh, in a Super Bowl, well, excuse me, their offense has scored the most points uh, in a loss in a Super Bowl because their defense couldn't stop Kansas City at all. That now has six new starters, a lot of which are young guys that are unproven. We'll see if they're as talented as the talking heads believe that they are. I'm betting that this year might be a little bit harder than last year was. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm just a hater. I don't know. But I think the Eagles may be in for a couple of rough roads. Or you're going to be in for, you know what I'm saying. I've been out in the sun, okay? I've been out in the sun. Oh, man, check this out. Look at it. They're putting everybody out of a job now. Look at this shit. Hold it. Can I turn? Ain't no love for a flag man anymore. Look at this. The flag man has been fired. The flag man has lost his job. It's automated now. Come on, man. Seriously, you better watch out, man. Your job is next. The flag man, unemployed now. Don't make no damn sense. The flag man lost his job to a trailer of lights and sensors. Mm, mm, mm. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I'm gonna get back over to Red Brick House right now and uh, do some of this work on the Red Brick House. Get the plaster on and get ready to hear about practice. I'll see you guys. And don't forget, six hours from right now, we'll be doing our live stream. Oh, come on, man. Look, look, at, look at this shit. Tractor trailer. Like getting stuck around. Try, oh, man. See, that's why you need a flag man. Tractor trailers, but mess, just messing shit up. Just messing it up. I just need a gallon of paint, damn it. Can, can a brother go get his paint? All right, peace.